Hello, everybody, and welcome to a, another daily devotional. I'm Pastor Zach from Taylorville United Methodist Church, coming to you from my kitchen. Uh, thank you so much for being here today with us. It's uh, it's a great thing that we can still gather together around a common purpose, a common cause, even when we have to be separate. So whether you're with us on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, thanks for being here. It really uh, is a blessing to me to know that we are uh, able to go through Scripture together, even in such a strange time. Also, Happy May! It is Friday, it is May 1st, we are uh, still moving along in the year. It's hard to believe that it's already May, but when you go outside, it's starting to feel a little bit like summer, and uh, that's, that's something I think we can be excited about. So we are walking through the book of Philippians. We are looking at this letter that Paul wrote from prison and seeing what he had to say, knowing that this was possibly one of the final things he would write, seeing what he had to say in that circumstance to one of the more important churches in the world, the first church in Europe, and that is the church at Philippi. And so, starting in chapter 3, he says this, Not that I have already obtained all of this, that is, uh, just to look back at, at yesterday, Paul was talking about uh, taking on the mind of Christ, adopting a sort of demeanor of Christ. And so he says this, Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That is the word of God for us, the people of God. So one thing that we know about books and movies is that there are good books and good movies, and then there are bad ones. I'm uh, a bit of a film buff myself. I've seen way more movies than I really probably should have. And I do have a degree in English literature, so I've also read more books than many people probably would think that I should have. And so I can say with full confidence that there are a couple of things that make a story particularly good and particularly well told. And one of those things is that it has a consistent trajectory from start to finish. Now what I mean by that is that a good book or a good movie builds rather than contradicts. When a story has this sharp turn somewhere within it in, in terms of tone, uh, when it suddenly goes in a totally different direction, it throws us off it catches us off guard, it undermines the whole experience, and it just makes it kind of hard to follow. It builds uh, on itself when it's written well. It amplifies the meaning rather than contradicting it. There's this trope called Chekhov's gun, which is uh, the simple statement that in the first act of something, if there is a gun hand hanging over the mantle, then in the last act it better go off. And of course, this isn't really about a tool that comes up in the beginning of something being used in the end or anything like that. What it's saying is that nothing should be unnecessary. That everything that happens in this story happens for a reason. And that reason builds towards the conclusion. The same thing is true for our lives. When we have major shifts when we suddenly turn around, when we are dragged this way and that by things that happen to us, it, sh it, it just throws us off. It disorients us, and it catches us off guard. And as we are looking towards the future, as we're trying to see where we're going to go, the relationship that we have with our past, with Act 1 or 2, or five, or whatever, with the earlier parts of our lives, that relationship can either hold us back, it can keep us looking backwards, or 
it can push us forwards. The things that have happened to us before can either distract us or they can encourage us to move on. And so what we have to ask, friends, as the church and as people, is what is the trajectory of your life? Where is all of this leading? Paul says this as he's standing in prison, as he is writing from the place where he could possibly die. He says, I don't think that I have claimed the prize yet, but here's what I know. Here's what I do think. That I can forget what's behind. I can forget the things that have happened to me. I can leave those in the past, and I can strive towards what's yet to come, because that is the goal. Because that is what I'm working towards. Because that's where the prize can be found. Friends, what is the trajectory of your life? Are you always turning around, revisiting the past, letting it stop your momentum, and letting it dominate you in your decisions? Or are you moving forward with passion, keeping the end in sight, and striving after the goal? If you want to do that, you have to know what the goal is that you're working towards. And I know that this can be hard to hear, but we're not called to reclaim what was. We're called to build and grow towards what should be. We're called to look towards a better future, the future that's laid out in Scripture, the same one that Paul was looking forward to when he was writing to the church in Philippi. We are running a race, the same one as Paul. We're striving after the prize that is Jesus Christ. Friends, we can know where our trajectory should take us, and it should be towards Jesus. It should be heavenward. So every moment of our lives should move in that same direction. We should strive without failing without ceasing, and without slowing. And if a time comes when we do stumble for a moment, don't let that hold you back because the prize has not changed. The goal doesn't change just because we slow down for a second. It doesn't matter what has happened before. We can't change the past. All we can do is right now make the decision to strive towards Christ. For Paul, that meant continuing to preach the gospel even while he was in prison, even as the guards mocked him. For the church in Philippi, it meant setting aside their arguments and their debates so that they could continue to spread the good news in a kingdom that hated them. What does the trajectory look like for us, friends? Well, I think it looks a lot like it did for these Christians in the first century. It looks like sharing the good news. It looks like having joy in difficult times. It looks like not letting our circumstances get the best of us and instead staying focused on God. Instead keeping our eyes fixed on Him and fixed on heaven so that we know where we're going. That is, after all, the good news, is that we can have that blessed assurance. Let's pray together. Gracious God, I thank you for the gift of today. I thank you for the guidance that you've given us through Scripture and through your presence in our lives. Lead us in your word. Lead us in your ways, God, so that we might always strive after you, not by our own strength, but by the strength of your Son, Jesus Christ, and his Spirit. Lord, bless us as we go into this weekend, as we begin a new month. Lord, keep us safe and healthy. I pray these things in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, friends, as we move into the weekend, Uh, Continue to check in on one another. Continue to make phone calls and send text messages. And don't forget that we're called to still be the hands and feet of Christ. 
no matter how strange the times may be, no matter whether we get to go back to our favorite places or not quite yet, our call is still the same, and that is to strive after Christ. Go in peace with courage and strength in his holy name. Amen.